Hi, this is Joanna with the Department of Online Learning. And this is a short tutorial on creating a peer review assignment using the Turnitin tool. The peer review assignment using Turnitin is created in the content area. It is not created as part of an assignment folder. So you need to click on the content area Navigate to whatever module you would like to place your content in, your assignment in. In this particular instance, we're going to put it in this sample module. Then click on the button that says Add Existing Activities. Scroll down. Select Turn It In link. And a window will pop up with a number of options. The first thing you need to enter is your title. You enter in the max grade and some instructions. I'm going to go ahead and fill this information out really quickly and then resume the video. When you're selecting the dates, the start date is the date that students will begin to be able to turn in their assignments for the peer review. So that's the date that if it's a draft, for a paper, for example, as in this example, that's the date that they are going to be able to first turn in their draft. The date that that draft is due is the due date, and the feedback release date is the date that the students will be able to see feedback on their drafts. If you're going to do a peer review assignment, go ahead and click the box that says Enable Peer Mark. You can scroll down a little bit, Click on Optional Settings, and you can make some choices about what you would like to do with their drafts. You can choose to submit them to the standard paper repository, or you can choose not to store them at all. You can choose to allow any submission of any kind of file type if you'd like. This is particularly helpful if you are going to be reviewing multimedia files like videos or images. You may want to select that. You can choose to allow for late submissions. This is not recommended as it does make it very challenging for you to assign peer reviews when people turn in their papers late. You can also optionally enable grammar checking or attach a rubric. There will be a separate video on attaching a rubric. You can choose how this should be evaluated, whether you're comparing it against student repositories or journals, and you can have a similarity report run on the document as well. You can generate them immediately, and they cannot resubmit, or they can resubmit as many times as you like. You can choose to exclude bibliographic materials, quoted materials, and you can also optionally exclude small sources, so small quotes and things of that nature. And you can also upload an assignment template that can be excluded from the similarity check as well. So for instance, if you are doing a worksheet and students are turning in and will have all of that text in every assignment, you want to make sure that you are not checking that for similarity with other assignments. When you're satisfied with all of those settings, you want to make sure you click the Submit button. This creates an assignment. You need to go back in at this point and tie this to your gradebook. So your draft for paper one, you need to go in to your grades. Click Manage Grades. Scroll down. And locate your draft for paper one. You can see that it is not assigned to anything. If I click the arrow here, I can go ahead and click Edit. And then I can assign this to a category. Again, if you're not using weighted grades, this isn't necessary. But if you are using weighted grades, you want to make sure that you tie the assignment to the correct category. When you're done making that change, go ahead and click Save and Close and now your assignment will be tied to your gradebook appropriately. So now that we've made the assignment for the draft, we need to go back in and set up the rules and assignments 
assignment directions for the peer review itself. So we go back to content, navigate to the assignment we just created, and click on the link right there. When you log in and you have a peer review, you'll see that you have a peer mark tab. Click on the little drop down arrow next to peer mark tab and select peer mark setup. You'll see you have three tabs for peer mark assignments. The first is peer mark assignment, and this is where you put in the title of the peer mark assignment and the directions. This is not the same as the assignment inbox. That's this tab. It does, however, automatically populate with this information. You can enter in a maximum number of points available, and you can also change the dates for review. So students can review from is the date that you're releasing them and expecting students to start their peer reviews. It's recommended that this date is after your due date. Students can review until, so whatever review window you're giving students for your peer review, that's when this will close and students will no longer be able to log in and complete their peer reviews. And then peer feedback is available from is at the point at which students are going to be able to review their feedback from their peers. And so you can set that time as well. I'm going to go ahead and enter in some instructions here and then return to the video. Okay, so now I have entered in this information. So let's go ahead and click additional settings. You can choose to award maximum points on review, so just completion points. It's not recommended that you do this. The next question asks if students can view the names of their peers during review. If you do check no, it's important that the students do not have their names on the paper themselves for this to give them any kind of anonymity. The next question says that students without a submission can review. This will send a draft to all students that are enrolled in the course, even if they did not turn in an assignment for the draft. It is important that you make sure that the roster within Turnitin is correct if you would like to use this assignment option. Please speak with online learning for help on making sure that the roster in Turnitin aligns with the one that is currently listed in D2L. The next question asks you to determine a number for automatically distributing papers for review. This is how many papers you're asking each student to do a peer review for. Even though it says automatic, you can assign specific students to one another at a later time. And I will show you how to do that towards the end of this video. You can also allow students to self-select papers for review or a require them to review their own. When you are happy with all of your choices, click save and continue. Notice that there's a button up here that says create peer mark assignment and also delete. You do not want to click the button that says create peer mark assignment unless you want to create an additional peer mark assignment. This already is a creation of a peer mark assignment with the creation of this tab. If you click create peer mark assignment, you will get another tab that says assignments and it will list multiple assignments underneath it. So I have a title for this peer mark review assignment. I have some instructions in here. I have my points. I have my due dates. I can also go in if I click on the peer mark questions and give my students specific things to address when they are interacting with their peers assignments. I can either add things from a library that Turnitin has, I can save questions to the library, or I can freely write questions. So to add from the library, I can just click sample library, I put a check in a box, and I click add selected questions, and it throws it right in there. If I want to add my own question, I can choose a scaled question, and I would say maybe, how would you rate the supports in this essay? And I could have a scale 
of 1 to 10. And I can go ahead and click Save. And both of these questions are here and populated. I can click the pencil button to edit them at any point or the garbage can to get rid of it. I can also reorder them if I would like. The last tab here is distribution, and this is where you will be able to assign peer reviews for your students. So I can go ahead, even though it says forced zero system assigned one, that means it's automatically all going to happen. But if I click on this plus sign, I could give that student a particular one, and now it will change to forced one system assigned zero, and the that student is still only getting one paper to peer review, but I have selected who they are going to review. I can get rid of that by unpairing, by clicking the minus sign that is on the left-hand side or blue, and then I just make that selection and click confirm, and I, now it's returned to automatically assigning my peer reviewers. If you want to manually assign people for peer review, it is important that you do this before your peer review assignment is going to open and release to the students. That concludes our short tutorial on how to create a peer review assignment within D2L. If you need any more help with this, please reach out to us at Online Learning at onlinelearning.prairiestate.edu or stop by my office in 3216.